Shake the Room, Fire Nation. JLD here with an audio masterclass that's going to knock your socks off. It is how to grow your business for free with word of mouth. And this is with none other than JLD. Bear. We're going to be talking about why word of mouth is more important than ever, why companies ignore word of mouth at their peril. We'll be chatting about what customers actually tell stories about and what they don't, and why the same is lame, and why follow the leader is a terrible strategy, as well as the four ingredients of a talk trigger and the five types of talk triggers. These are things that are going to positively impact your business today, Fire Nation. Well, who is Jay? Well, he's the founder of Convince and Convert. He's a seventh generation entrepreneur, and he's the author author of six best-selling books, including Talk Triggers. He's also the founder of five multi-million dollar companies and a Hall of Fame speaker. So we're going to dive into this content when we get back from thanking our sponsor. Wish you could shine a spotlight on your top candidates when you post a job? Great news. ZipRecruiter will do just that. ZipRecruiter identifies the right people and actively invites them to apply to your job. Then, as applications come in, they analyze each one and spotlight the top candidates to save you time and make sure you never miss a great match. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash fire. ZipRecruiter the smartest way to hire. So Jay, say what's up and give Fire Nation a little details about something that most people don't know about you. Fire Nation, it is fantastic to be back <laughs> with you. Always awesome to hang with JLD. Yes. Look, I have been uh, an entrepreneur now for, bro, like 25 years You're or OJ. something. I'm deceptively, I'm deceptively youthful looking. Um, <laughs> I don't think I ever told you the story. Some people may know it because I mention it on stage sometimes. My partner and I, in my very first internet company in 1993, we sold Budweiser.com to Anheuser-Busch for 50 cases of beer. What? That's a true story. What? We were so psyched because we're like, bro, that is a lot of beer. 50 cases. 50 cases of long neck Budweiser regular, Bud Heavy. Because here's the thing, though. We registered all these domains when domains were free. Right. Like, you didn't have to pay anybody because who would want a website? Like I spent the first five years of my digital career convincing companies that they would want to have a website at all. Because they would literally say, well, Jay, why would we want to have a website? Because we close at six. So why would we want people <laughs> to get like stuff about us? Like this is no joke, man. This this is not dumb companies. These are like real companies, right? And and uh, so, yeah, we, we sold it for uh, 50 cases of beer. So then I went on vacation because I was so stoked. And while I was gone, my partner registered some other domain names without me. So one of those was beer.com. Okay. And he sold that to he sold that to Molson Brewing for five point one million dollars. <laughs> and he hasn't really worked since then other than just stuff he wants to work on. And I'm here again uh, on, on your show. So <laughs> um, uh, so that's how that worked out. Okay. Now I don't want to like rub this in, but just if you had to estimate, if you'd like waited six years, it's like 99, it's like 2000, it's like the height of the dot com. Like, what do you think you could have got for Budweiser.com? I mean, that's when he sold beer.com was at the height. Um, so I don't know. I don't really know. Well, here's the thing though. I don't want to go too far down the ra- rabbit hole here, but when it got into those days, right? 98, 99, 2000, they changed the rules, right? The international um, numbers organization said that, look, if you have the international or, or even national trademark and copyright on that name, you can't necessarily like squat on it and hold a hostage. So uh, there's a period of time where you, you know, beer.com is not a brand, right? right. It's a thing. So that's a, a different story. Budweiser is obviously a brand. And so there was a time there where you could have probably extricated a lot more money out of them. But then eventually you would have gotten zero, not even 50 cases of beer. They just would have said, give it back to us. It's our trademark. So it's a fine line. Okay. Let's just say, let's just be happy with the beer, but heavy. Let's just be happy with it. Absolutely. Those are the days I could still drink, but heavy. <laughs> Well, I think one reason why you still look so youthful and people would never guess that you've been doing this since 93 and earlier is I think it's the glasses, man. I think really glasses give you that youthful look. It's also that I'm always indoors. I think that's part of it. (laughs) I'm an avid indoorsman. Oh, well, Fire Nation, as you can tell, Jay Bear's rocking the mic today. And the audio masterclass we're going to be going through is how to grow your business for free with word of mouth. And I'm really fired up about this for a number of reasons. So Jay, we're going to go into a lot of things, but just give us maybe a 15 to 20 second, real, real quick teaser preview of what this audio mash class is going to be about. 
word of mouth is responsible for somewhere between 20 and 90% of your customers. I don't care what business you're in. That's true. We have all the research to prove it. Yet nobody listening right now, nobody in Fire Nation actually has a word of mouth strategy. You probably have a marketing strategy, you have a digital strategy, social media strategy, crisis management strategy, HR and recruiting strategy, you know, nurture sequence strategy, but nobody has a word of mouth strategy. We just take it for granted and it's crazy. And we're going to fix that in this audio masterclass. Wow. We're going to fix that Fire Nation. And again, Talk Triggers is Jay's new book. We talked about that in the intro a little bit, um, but this book is actually so on fire right now that I heard that Amazon is running out of copies in their Kindle store. So just think about that for a second. And Jay, let's just dive in. Why word of mouth is more important than ever. Break it down for us. Well, there's a few reasons why this is true, JLD, but I think the one that Fire Nation will really understand because of the nature of the community is that we trust each other more than ever. And we trust companies and organizations less than ever. And that's not just me being hyperbolic. There's data around that. That is true. Everything about that is true. Not to mention the fact when you hear a recommendation from a trusted person, if JLD says buy this book, if, if, if your friend says, hey, this is a great restaurant, if somebody you know says, hey, this is a software company you ought to think about supporting, you take that seriously. You put those recommendations into action. 83% of Americans have made a purchase in the last 30 days based on a recommendation from a friend or family member. And, and because of the nature of how we interconnect today, when you get those face-to-face kind of word-of-mouth referrals like, hey, we're on the phone, we're on Skype, I see you face-to-face and, hey, you got to check this out. Like that carries so much value in our world today because so much of what we've been taught to believe in business and as consumers is that advertising will tell you what to buy. But here's the truth. Advertising is only the seventh most persuasive form of, of, of decision-making when people go to make a purchase. But of course, it's you know hundreds of billions of dollars worth of effort, but it's not as persuasive as me saying, hey, JLD, I think you got to do this. I mean, Fire Nation, every single show that I've watched over the past five years on Netflix, on Amazon, has been a direct recommendation from one of my friends who I know, like, and trust their opinion. Literally, I will not watch a show that has not been recommended to me by one of my friends, period. And that was just a mind-blowing number, Jay, when you said that advertising is only the seventh most persuasive. I mean, that is insane. I mean, I don't want to put your feet to the fire here, but what are at least some of the six that are, that are more persuasive? than advertising. Personal experience, recommendation from a friend or family member, face-to-face, offline, right? Phone, email, whatever. Uh, Social media, uh, posts from friends, uh, certainly one of them. Um, To to some degree, depending on the the product category, news coverage, right? So if you you read about it in the newspaper, that kind of thing, you're like, oh, okay, I, I believe that. So it's that, it's that kind of thing. But then straight up ads is pretty far down the list. However, interesting footnote there. Fire Nation, amongst younger Americans, especially Gen Z, right, who are uh, 14 to 24, depending on how you you, you cut off your generations, uh, advertising is so far a, a little bit more impactful for that group. They haven't gotten cynical yet, I guess. That is so fascinating. And one thing that we've kind of talked about and recognized is that companies are just flat out ignoring word of mouth. I mean, why is that the case? We take it for granted. You know, everybody knows word of mouth is important, but we just assume that our customers and our supporters and our tribe, our nation will support us, right? We just figure, well, uh, I'm a good company. So people will talk about my company because it's good, right? We just sort of figure that competency creates conversations, but it doesn't really. What is something that your company specifically, Convince and Convert, has done to really try to get word of mouth going? Like, what are some things that you've seen that have really been awesome? I mean, you're a big uh, proponent of podcasting. You've launched a ton within Convince and Convert. What are some things like that that really seem to work for you and your business with that word of mouth? Yeah, like one of the things we're we're doing now is quarterly really large research studies. Like we did one recently which was breaking down the social media programs of America's top 50 hospital systems. Right? So so not just saying, "Hey, you should hire us to help you because we're smart." It's, "Hey, we've done the research to demonstrate to you that we know what we're doing and if we can help you, great. If not, here's some fantastic information that you will appreciate as well. So it's those kind of things that they get, they get passed along. Uh, but, but what we really try and work on the most 
with our customers is being what we would call talkably responsive. So it's one of the kind of ways that you can create chatter is by being faster, more responsive than customers expect. One of the ways we do that, uh, JLD, is that you you probably know, Fire Nation may not know, that my company's uh, all virtual, has been for a decade, right. totally distributed out, all over the world. So what we do is we get different time zones and all that. So clients know how to reach me and all the other people on my team, but each client can use the email now, N-O-W, at convinceandconvert.com. That goes out to everybody in the company immediately. It's like a bat signal. And so if a client sends that, everybody drops what they're doing, and whoever is the most uh, capable or the most available will jump on that client request immediately. So a lot of professional services companies are, are relatively responsive, and they can get back to you same day or next day or a couple of days later. We get back to our clients in seconds, literally in seconds. And so we've put a lot of effort into that operational differentiator of responsiveness. See, I find that really interesting, Fire Nation, when Jay was talking about how ads are actually less effective. And one of the reasons why they're specifically less effective is because, guess what? We expect ads to, of course, rave about their own product, their own service, whatever that <laughs> right, might be. Yeah, I mean, we just expect exactly. that. But then I really thought that was interesting is that you were talking about news coverage. And when we see news coverage, you know, there's like an independent third party there. And so when you're seeing like an independent third party, that's probably not getting benefited in, in, in any direct way by talking positively about a product or a service or a company or whatever it might be, we're like, wow, well, they don't really have a reason to be pumping this company up, so they must be good. So that can be a really effective way when you're getting that news coverage in a meaningful manner. And something, Jay, that I really feel like you've done great with your company and we're really striving for here with Entrepreneurs on Fire is really making the, what the customers tell the stories about meaningful and even sometimes, more importantly, what they don't tell stories about. So kind of break that down for us. Yeah. Yeah. We were touching this a minute ago that, that we believe in business so often that competency creates conversation, that being good is, is enough to, to spur chatter. But the research that I conducted for the new book suggests that that's not the case typically. And that's because of two reasons. One, all of your competitors are good generally speaking, right? Or they wouldn't be in business at all. Now, you may very well be better than your competition, but are you so much better that it requires somebody to say, hey, man, you would not believe, like these guys are, are so much better? Maybe, but typically not. The other thing that's important to understand is that as human beings, we are, physio we are physiologically wired uh, to ignore things that are average and discuss things that are different. So what we're trying to do when we try to build companies for free, and this is without question the best way to build any company is to have your customers do it for you. And the best way to do that is to give them a consistent story to tell that they will then tell their friends. But that story has to be something interesting because they want to tell their friends an interesting story. You know, just say that that, that restaurant has good food. Ah, that's not a very interesting story. Mm. If you're, if the restaurant has uh, a mermaid show uh, from nine o'clock to midnight, like the Sip and Dip Lounge in Great Falls, Montana, what? Uh, yeah, for real, man. Behind the bar, it's like the it, this. Okay, true story. I want to go. So this bar, this bar is in Great Falls, Montana. Okay, which is hard to get to even by Montana standards. <laughs> this, this bar was named last year one of the top ten bars in America, worth flying to by GQ magazine. And it's because every night from nine o'clock to midnight at the Sip and Dip, they have a giant aquarium behind the bar. Every night between nine and midnight, mermaid show. <laughs> That's their talk trigger, right? That's their word of mouth generator. That is a story that every single person who walks through that door will tell multiple other people. It's not about they have a good patty melt. It's not about they have a great piano player, although they do. It's a mermaid show, right? And and that's a choice. Like word of mouth is an operational choice that you make to do something different in your business. Unfortunately, most companies don't make that choice, JLD, because they're playing follow the leader. They say, who's the best company, the biggest company, the most successful company, the fastest growing company in our category? What do they do? Let me copy what they do. Let's adopt the quote unquote best practices. Here's the problem though. If you're playing follow the leader, you will never be other anything other than second best. And the story that people tell is not your story. It's your competitor's story, actually. So you're much better off figuring out what your version of mermaids behind the bar are because that's the story that your customers will tell. 
I mean, there's so many things that I'm pulling out of this Fire Nation. I want to go over a couple right now. I mean, think about this. In the old days, competency did create conversation, but that's no longer the case because guess what? Everybody is good or they wouldn't be around right now. Everybody got good. Everybody got good. Everybody got good. You need to be great. You, Fire Nation, need to be great. And I love that phrase you use is that we ignore average and we discuss what's different. Because think about a Fire Nation. If it's not a threat to our lives or something that's going to vastly improve our lives, why are we going to waste our time on it? If it's just average, if it's just you know, like a snail going across a road that's not a threat to us or it's not going to vastly improve our lives, we're just going to step on it or just step over it. So you want to be different. You want to be discussed. You want your customers to tell stories like the Mermaid Show. The Mermaid Show is a story. And Fire Nation, if you think Jay's dropping value bombs, you're right. And we got more of these value bombs coming when we get back from thanking our sponsor. Fire Nation, I'm here with Ian Siegel, the CEO of Zip Recruiter. And Ian, I assume that you had a few hiring challenges of your own before you founded Zip Recruiter. What encouraged you to build Zip Recruiter to begin with? The decision to build ZipRecruiter stemmed from my own frustration with how time-consuming and frustrating the hiring process was. I was working for startups where we were too small to have our own HR department, and so I was posting my own jobs to multiple job sites and then finding my own way to get the candidates out of those sites. It was one of the things I looked forward to the least in executing my role. I built ZipRecruiter to create a one-click simple solution where you push a button and your job goes to every job site on the web and then all the candidates come into one easy to review list. It makes the hiring process so much simpler and it makes it so much faster to find the right person. Fire Nation, I can empathize with how Ian used to feel. Can you? Because before ZipRecruiter, you had to go to multiple sites, each with their own unique login and password combination. The process was so disorganized. Being able to access all your job candidates in one place is a huge time saver. Having an organized process is critical, Fire Nation, when you hire, and it's built in with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring simple. With one click, ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, but they don't stop there. Zip Recruiter's powerful technology scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right skills, education, and experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. It's no wonder Zip Recruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. based on Trustpilot ratings of hiring sites with over a thousand reviews. And right now, Fire Nation, you can try Zip Recruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to this exclusive web address, ziprecruiter.com slash fire. That's Zip Recruiter dot com slash f i r e ziprecruiter dot com slash fire ziprecruiter the smartest way to hire. So Jay, we're back and we kind of discussed this a little bit before the break, but I want to dive deeper into why same is lame and why that follow the leader strategy is simply a terrible one. So let's dive into this. If you're trying to create word of mouth by doing something that everybody else does. It's just not a story that customers are likely to pass along because the story itself doesn't make the customer look very good when they tell it. See, we tell stories that make us look good. It's just how we're wired, right? So you want to make sure that that what you're giving customers, the, the raw materials for word of mouth that you provide them is something that the listener, i.e. the friend of your customer, hasn't already heard. Because once they've already heard it, like, oh, yeah, I know another business that does that, mm. then it takes all the air out It takes all the air out of the balloon, right? Then the customer feels bad. It's not a good story. And the whole thing falls flat. So it's got to be a little tweak. And I got to tell you how, how incredibly powerful this is. So you travel all the time. Yeah. Lots of listeners travel. So you might know the talk trigger, the sort of word of mouth storytelling device of Doubletree Hotels. So Doubletree by Hilton every day gives everybody who checks in a warm chocolate chip cookie when you check in. That's their thing. They've done it every day for 30 years. They've done this. Warm chocolate chip cookie. 75,000 cookies a day they give away now. That's a lot of cookies. Yeah. So I talked to 1,000 Doubletree customers recently for the book, and I said, hey, uh, have you ever told anybody about this cookie? 34% of their customers, JLD, have mentioned the cookie to somebody else without being asked in the past 60 days. So if you do the math on that, it's 25,000 cookie conversations every 24 (laughs) hours. Now, there's a reason why you almost never see an ad for Doubletree. Because the cookie 
and the conversation it creates is their advertising. It is how they grow the business. And everybody listening, everybody in Fire Nation can do the same. If you make a choice to do something different instead of choosing to try and rip off the good ideas of your competition. Mm. Now, I do love that phrase he uses that we tell stories that make us look good. I'm not 100% sure how telling somebody that you ate a chocolate chip cookie makes you look good in this day and age. <laughs> you're, making a good, you're making a good hotel choice. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get it and I love it. And I can actually so clearly remember back in 2004, um, I was in Fort Knox, Kentucky, which is about 45 minutes south of Louisville. And every weekend, we'd get off our armor officer basic training and we'd go up to Louisville for the weekend. And we had, you know, 10 hotels to choose from. And we would just kind of go random, like whichever one would be the cheapest. And we'd find our hotel and we'd all bunk up in there. And one of those weekends, early on in the training, we stayed at a double tree and we all got those cookies and we walked up and we were kind of unpacking, we're eating the cookies, you know, we're 23, 24 years old. And we never went to another hotel the rest of the time. It was literally, it was just <laughs> they that. Had you for life. They had us for life. We went back, you know, 15 weekends in a row to Louisville and we stayed in Doubletree every single time because of the cookie. There was no great reason. And also because we could take the hinges off the door really easily in the adjoining room to play beer pong. But that was another reason the cookies were <laughs> so amazing. And I, my mouth is literally was watering when you were talking, but I went right back to Louisville, Kentucky, that Doubletree, that chocolate chip cookie. And I've talked about that, by the way, multiple times. Now here we are talking about an entrepreneur's on fire. Well, and here's the thing about that, right? When you think about the other approach, right? Which what are the best practices and, and let's not worry about storytelling or word of mouth. Let's take word of mouth for granted as we all do. What you would focus on instead is, well, what we should have is a comfier bed or a better location or better food in the bar or, or some other kind of convent, better parking, some other kind of conventional hotel attributes. But what really gets the story told is none of those things. It's the cookie. You made a hotel selection, not based on location, but based on a cookie. So you just got to figure out, Fire Nation, what's your cookie? What's your version of that story? So we're talking about cookies. Cookies obviously have ingredients. And you, within your book, Talk Triggers, have broken down a talk trigger into mm. four ingredients. So kind of walk us through yeah. those four. Look, there's lots of good books on word of mouth. This, you know, the idea of word of mouth has been around since the first caveman sold a rock <laughs> to another caveman. Right? So this isn't like, wow, uh, Jay invented a new way of marketing. No, the problem with word of mouth, though, and there's a lot of great books out there. The problem is well, there's a lot of books out there that say word of mouth is important, and it is more than ever, as we discussed. But what there's not is a lot of books that say, okay, Jay, I believe you. Now, how do I do it? So Daniel Lemon, who co-authored the book uh, with me, he and I were really intentional about this book to say, look, we want a system that every business can use to repeatedly and reliably grow their business at no cost by building a word of mouth wave, by using storytelling and talk triggers to do so. So it's real specific, right? It's a four, five, six system, four ingredients, five types, six steps. We'll talk about that. But I just want to emphasize that it's it's not it is not a workbook. It is a regular business book, but it's almost a workbook because it's so prescriptive. So the first piece of the four, five, six system is the four things that must be true that have to be present for your proposed differentiator to really work as a talk trigger, to work as a reliable, consistent uh, word of mouth generator that will differentiate your business. And and one of those is it has to be remarkable, right? It kind of goes without saying that that the story has to be worthy of remark, right? That's what remarkable means. And as we talked about earlier, JLD, like, you know, it, it has to be a story worth telling. And and so it doesn't have to be hard. The operational differentiator doesn't have to be complicated. I mean, making a cookie isn't really that hard, <laughs> but it is remarkable, right? So it has to meet that test. It has to be something that the customer and the friends of the customer haven't heard over and over and over. That's the first piece. Let's go on to number two. Second piece is it has to be repeatable. And what I mean by that is it's got to be something that every customer is offered every time. I'll tell you a little story about this. There's a restaurant in Sacramento called Skip's Kitchen, and Skip's is a hamburger counter server res restaurant, right? So you go to the you go to the front and they have their menu board there, and you say, "I want two patty melts and a chocolate shake and onion rings," and then they give you a number and then they bring your food out. Pretty common, but they have an incredible talk trigger, an amazing word of mouth generator. Here's how it works: you place your order, and then from underneath the counter, they whip out a deck of cards, and they fan all the cards out face down in front of you, and they say. Pick a card. <laughs> and you select a card. And if you get a joker, 
Fire Nation, your entire meal is free. Shut the front door. Now, this restaurant, Skip's Kitchen, is 10 years old. They have spent a grand total of zero dollars and zero cents on promotion in the entire history of the restaurant. Yet, there's a line to get in every day, and they were just named the 29th best hamburger restaurant in America by USA Today. They can do that because three people a day, on average, win that Joker game. And when they win, they go crazy. <laughs> They're like <laughs> taking taking patty melt selfies and calling their mom. Yeah, that is on their Instagram story, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. IG stories, a high school marching band shows up. I mean, it's a pretty spectacular <laughs> deal, right? And so it doesn't matter whether or not you win. It just matters that you get a chance to play. The key is that it is repeatable. Every customer, every time gets a chance to play. It's not just on Wednesdays. It's not only at lunch. It's not on ladies night. It's not if you buy five burgers, you get to play. Everybody gets a chance to play. This is important because we are at a place right now in marketing, especially digital, especially social, where many businesses have embraced what we call surprise and delight. Surprise and delight is where you take one customer in one circumstance and you do something amazing for them, right? That's like hotels do this all the time, right? You check into your hotel and like, oh my God, there's a live panda bear in my room. That's amazing. I'm going to put that on Twitter, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like they're just trying to like shoot the moon for one customer. Right. Uh, but that that's a, that's a lottery ticket. That's not a strategy that you can't do that every day and it may not work anyway. So you're much better off making an operational choice, right? To give out cookies, to have a, a joker game, whatever your thing is, and and give every customer the opportunity to tell that story. Goodness, that is such a good story. So we've talked about remarkable, we've talked about repeatable. What's next? Third one is reasonable. And one of the other things we do in business today, because it's it's hard, right? It's hard to get attention. You know, consumers are cynical. There's lots of um, competition. There's a million podcasts. There's a million whatever you're doing. So what we try to do sometimes, we, 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 we convince ourselves, we tell ourselves a story, which is, well, all right, look, man, the only way I'm going to get be able to break through is if we do something extraordinary, not just remarkable, but like bizarre. And, and so it's like, all right, we're going to have a contest and one of you guys is going to win an island. And you're like, wait, what? I'm going to win an island, right? You just, you, you try to make it so big to break through. But the problem is when you offer experiences to your customers that are too grand it doesn't create conversation. It creates suspicion. You don't want your customers to be hunting down your terms and conditions. You don't want your customers to be saying, there's no way they're going to give me an island. Like if I say, JLD, if I say, and you get a car, 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 who am I, who am I talking about? Oprah. Oprah, right? Who else can do that? Nopra. <laughs> no problem. Nobody, uh, nobody else can do that, no right? Problem. Because nobody else has that kind of like no one. Even, even you, as as authoritative as you are, as much as Fire Nation, I cannot give out cars. Fire Nation, I'm sorry. You said everybody gets a car. Fire Nation, we're like, wait a second, JLD's <laughs> not giving us. A car. Everybody gets a coconut. I got plenty of those in my front yard, though. Like, plenty of a coconut, right? So you can't overshoot it, right? So when we say that your your talk trigger has to be reasonable, it's got to be something. It's like the Goldilocks zone, right? It's got to be interesting enough to be talkable, but not so big that it's doubted. Mm. And, and Doubletree is a perfect example, right? You know, you, you're making a hotel selection in Kentucky based on a cookie. And if you go on Twitter and just search Doubletree plus cookie, you'll see tweets like that all the time. I only go to Doubletree because of the cookie, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but bro, it's just a chocolate chip cookie. Okay. Right? Let's keep this in perspective here. It's a cookie. So it doesn't have to be something huge. It just has to be something noticeable. So it, it's got to be reasonable. And the fourth one on a related topic is it has to be relevant. You can see these are all ours if you're playing at home. The fourth ingredient is your differentiator has to be relevant, which means it makes sense in the context of who you are and what you are. Who you are and what you are. So there's a, there's a locksmith in New York City. His name is Jay Sofer. And he's the best locksmith in New York City uh, as rated by Yelp. He has the highest Yelp rating uh, of any locksmith. He also has one of the highest Yelp ratings of any business at all. Of any business. I mean, think about what that requires in Manhattan to be one of the highest rated businesses, period. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So one of the reasons one of the reasons he's so successful is that he has a talk trigger and it works like this. So he comes to your house and he uh, changes your locks or rekeys your apartment or lets you in because you locked yourself out or whatever. Before he leaves, he oils every single window and door lock in your premises, not just the one he worked on. And then he also does a security audit of your entire home for no cost before he leaves. That's his thing. 
there's a there's a, a testimonial of him on Yelp, like one of the reviews. It says, "I almost want to get locked out again." That's how good my experience was, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> but it makes sense because he is a locksmith, so oiling the locks and doing a security audit is contextually relevant. If Jay Sofer, the locksmith, said, "Hey, thanks very much for having me rekey your place. Uh, here's a chocolate chip cookie," you'd be like, <laughs> "All right." Um, why are you carrying these around locksmith? Like it, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Right. And, and so why the reason why Doubletree and the cookie works so well is that Doubletree, even within the pantheon of, I think there's 14 other brands inside the Hilton umbrella, their whole thing and has been for decades is warm welcome. So Doubletree, even more so than Hilton and the other brands focuses on that first 10 minutes and they train their staff really specifically on what happens from the second you walk in to the second you get to your room for the first time, which includes the cookie ceremony. That whole piece, the warm welcome is their kind of overall brand positioning differentiator and the cookie fits right into that. So it makes sense, right? If, if, if Hilton Double Tree by Hilton said, hey, when you get home, we'll do a security audit of your home. You're like, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense either. So it, it's got to be relevant, your differentiator. Does that make sense? It does. And I just want to go over the last two real quick because I thought they were very powerful because reasonable and the point that you made that I loved was being unreasonable doesn't create conversation, Fire Nation. It creates suspicion. So keep that in check. That Goldilocks can't be too warm, can't be too cold. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. And then relevant has to make sense with who you are and what you are. You don't want some locksmith handing you, you know, a grease cover chalk chip cookie. It just not is gonna make it's just not gonna make sense to that <laughs> it may, level. It may create conversation, but probably not the conversation <laughs> you want. So Jay, I want to end with the five types of talk triggers. We don't have to go through yeah. all of them because of course your book goes in depth through all of them. But maybe pick yeah. a couple out that you're really powerful. If you want to mention them all yeah, you can absolutely. and then we'll, we'll hit it. The one that we see most often, we've talked about it uh, here, is talkable generosity. That's when you're more generous than customers expect. So the, the cookie is talkable generosity. Oil in your locks is talkable generosity. Giving away food if you pick the joker is talkable generosity. That's one you see most often because it's the easiest to conceptualize for business. But it's by no means the only one. So there, there are four other options. Talkable responsiveness which is, we, we mentioned when we talked about convince and convert, that's when you are faster than customers expect. There's a business in New York, another one in New York called Paragon, and it's a, a car dealership, Honda Acura, and they have this amazing deal where they will pick up your car from work or from your home, they'll fix it overnight while you're sleeping and then bring it back to you in your driveway before you leave for work Ooh, next day. I like that. Right? How genius is that? So good. Because, you know, they're in Manhattan and so getting the cars to and from people because the traffic is like insane. Like, well, we'll just do it at night like magic elves. Talkably <laughs> responsive, right? Super good one. Love it. Talkable usefulness, right? So being more useful than your customers expect. There's a, a realtor in Florida, his name's Joe Manusa. And he only represents sellers. He only represents people selling a house. And he only represents sellers who are, have homes between like $200,000 and $400,000 US. So in that market segment, it's pretty common that you don't have a ton of upside equity in your home. So what happens a lot for those sellers is they think, well, I could work with a realtor or I could try and sell this sucker myself and keep the commission. Makes sense, right? Well, most realtors have a website and a content marketing and a social media strategy, which tries to convince sellers that, you know what, don't try this on your own. You need to use a realtor because, you know, I'm an expert. Joe does the opposite. Joe wrote a 60-page free downloadable PDF on his website, and it's called How to Sell a Home on Your Own in Florida. And it's exactly that. It's step-by-step -step precisely how to sell a home on your own. And I interviewed Joe for a book I wrote and I said, hey man, I don't get this because it seems like you're telling people exactly what they need to not hire. He said, <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. They get to about page 19 and they realize that it's way harder to sell a home on your own than they thought. And like, nah, dude, I don't want to hassle with this. And it's his number one source of customers. His name and email address are on every page. And not only does it create conversations and customers from those people, but the friends of those people. Because if your home is between $200,000 and $400,000, chances are so are your friends. And when your friends go to sell their home, like, hey, JLD, weren't you going to sell your house on your own? You're like, bro, don't do it. Don't even think about it. Don't even try it, man. <laughs> you'll, get to page, you'll get to page 19 and you'll realize it's a bad idea. Just call Joe. He'll hook you up. Right? It, it propels his business. It literally grows his business at no cost. 
your customers will clone themselves if you give them a consistent story to tell. Talkable generosity, talkable usefulness. What else we got? We got responsiveness, generosity, usefulness. The fourth one, I got to tell you, I wish wasn't in this list. And, and three years ago, wouldn't have been on this list. But the fourth one is talkable empathy, where you are more kind and more human mm. than your customers expect. And I wish that was not on the list, but I don't think I'm speaking out of school when I say that we are currently operating in an empathy deficit environment. And the default state of business used to be to take care of their customers and to be warm and human and caring. And that's not the default state anymore for a lot of businesses. So when you are like that, it creates conversation among your customers because they cannot believe how awesome you are. The fifth one we touched on a little bit earlier is talkable attitude. That's when you're just a little different, right? Everything about your business is just a little wacky, a little interesting, a little off kilter. MailChimp is a good example of a talkable attitude. Talk trigger with the with the um, with the chimp, and we mentioned one of the all time great uh, talkable attitude examples with the sip and dip lounge in Great Falls, Montana, with Aquarium of Mermaids. <laughs> that's a, you know, that's an amazing attitude driven story. So those are the five. So Fire Nation, talkable responsiveness, talkable generosity, talkable usefulness, talkable empathy, talkable attitude. Those are the five types of talk triggers. And Jay, you wrote this book, Talk Triggers, like really break down for Fire Nation who this book is for and really the the massive value they're going to get from reading and consuming this content. Anybody who is in charge of making a business bigger should read this book. So if you are at the executive level, an owner in charge of sales or marketing, uh, that's the group that should read this book and it will help every single person. The last third of the book is all about how to do it, the six step process for how to create talk triggers. And it says, okay, here's what marketing should do, here's what sales should do, here's what customer service should do. If you're a small business and you do all of those things, we've got recipes in there for you as well. There's all kinds of worksheets and examples, all kinds of bonus stuff. In fact, if you go to uh, talktriggers.com slash fire, uh, talktriggers.com slash fire, the actual six step process document for exactly how to do this, which is the same process that we use at my company to do this for big brands. Uh, it's right there for free. Just download it. I'd love for you to have it. So Fire Nation, one thing I love about Jay is he writes complete books. Now, I'm not going to lie. A lot of business books out there, I feel like after the first 25, 30%, you know, you're like, okay, I've gotten the, the entire value from this book that I'm going to get the entire book not Jay Bear books. These books are just value packed the entire way through. That's why I loved when you said in the, in the back third of that book, it's literally the six steps that you go to follow this process. So Fire Nation, you're going to be getting a book that takes you from A to Z through this entire process. It's going to be valuable every single page, every single way, every single step through. Talk triggers dot com slash fire and fire nation you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with you've been hanging out with jb and jld today so keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com type j in the search bar this isn't the first episode he's ever been on he's been on a bunch of past episodes so you can listen to those older shows where we also drop value bombs on different topics in different areas in fact the first time i had him on we talked about his entrepreneurial journey which is quite a doozy we never mentioned the budweiser thing <laughs> But uh, it was a pretty... I was saving it. I was saving You're it for this one. I'm just, I'm just holding out on you, man. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, Jay, what's the final just parting piece of guidance you want to give with Fire Nation before we say goodbye? You already know everything we just talked about is true. Everybody understands that word of mouth is hugely important to their business. Hugely important. But yet, we're very, very passive about it. We just take it for granted. What I want you to do is turn word of mouth from something that you do accidentally into something that you do on purpose. And if you do that, I can absolutely, positively guarantee that your business will be on fire. Fire Nation, talktriggers.com slash fire. That is your call to action. And Jay, thank you for sharing your truth with Fire Nation today. For that, brother, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Hey, Fire Nation, hope you enjoyed our chat with Jay today. And if you're ready to finally discover your big idea, I've created an amazing free training for you. And it's short, but it's sweet, but it's valuable. And it's all the things you need to get to your big idea, to get to your North Star. So just visit your big idea.io. Sit down, take the training, get your North Star. You won't regret it. I will see you there.
You've heard me say this before, ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. Well, what makes ZipRecruiter so smart? It learns what you like. When you post a job on ZipRecruiter and start reviewing applications, your feedback teaches ZipRecruiter's matching technology more about the precise skills and experiences you're looking for. That's how ZipRecruiter invites more qualified people to apply, which helps you quickly get better and better candidates until you find the perfect one. And right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right free just go to ziprecruiter.com slash fire that's ziprecruiter.com slash fire zip recruiter once again the smartest way to hire